I finished my half marathon and here is the proof. So now it's time to tell you about some news or some things I learned today or tomorrow. Monday. Let's see. Finally, I'm back home. And now it's time to tell you what interesting have I found today. And it was quite a long trip, so I had I had enough time. And the main topic, and the only one, today will be benchmarking. I read two brilliant articles about benchmarking, and I will share one of them with you today. And the second one, I hope tomorrow, if I won't find anything even better. So the first is about AWS Lambdas. As you may know, a couple of months ago, so quite recently, AWS announced Golang support for Lambdas. And uh, this thing is a huge deal, because the main idea of Lambda functions is to be mo modular, kind of tiny and pure. And this is a great application for Golang. Just to recall, previously Lambdas had support of Python, Node.js, Java, and in my company, for example, we mostly use Node.js. I cannot recall any, but I suppose we may have few Lambdas in Python as well. But it's mostly Node.js. And what is the main advantage of Golang comparing to, for example, Node.js? Yes, it's performance. And in the article I'm telling you about today, author compared performance of the same Lambda function written in Node.js and in Golang. And guys, results are really immersive. He used very basic Lambda setup. It was 128 megabytes RAM. And it was just a basic function calculating Fibonacci number for the 30, for number 30. Uh, it was just hard-coded number. He didn't have any input params. It was just a pure Lambda function having access via HTTP. And uh, as a response, it gave something like done string, and that's it. And the difference was really significant. Golang was about 300 milliseconds faster than Node.js with non-recursive code, which is about 40% difference. But the test was on the cold function. And uh, I think I will describe in some past videos that Lambda may have like two conditions. Either it's a cold or it's warm. If it's cold, it means that, that the new container should be started up for you. But if it's warm, container is the same and you just you just reuse it, you just reuse the existing uh, existing running code. So that's why, as a second step, he tried to test like on more alive example, more real example, on a warmer function, so to speak. He used 1000 requests, it was uh, 10 threads, 100 requests sequentially in, in each other, so 1000 in general. And he tried two Node.js versions, one of them was uh, recursive and one not recursive. A penny for your thought? What was the result? And while you're thinking, I will show you a video of a huge ferry floating in the city where I just ran half marathon. Okay, Node.js with recursion was about six times slower than Golang. But stop being jealous, JavaScript developers. When he rewrote this Lambda function from recursive Node.js to just a normal, it turned out that the difference is not so significant. It was less than 5% difference. However, we are not finished yet. Then he implemented more real-world example when the Lambda function was touching S3, picking an image from there and changing the uh, last access, last modified date on this file, on this image. And for accessing S3, he used uh, simple AWS SDK. And surprisingly, the difference was immense. Golang now performed much faster. It was about 40% faster. What actually means 40% less cost, 40% cost reduced for your company if you switch from Node.js to, uh, to Golang. By the way, I will take it with a grain of salt, because for me it is somehow strange that purely computational example showed almost identical performance. 
but uh, in the example when he used SDK and uh, additional service, it took so much more time for Node.js. So probably the reason is in SDK. And I would expect, I'm not sure, but I would expect that in the future, AWS could improve their SDK and uh, decrease the, the difference. However, for now, benchmarking is the best possible proof we have. So I would really consider switching some of our Lambda functions from Node.js to Golang, some, some simple ones, for example, or some heavy ones. One more interesting notice author gives, which I actually didn't know before, is that AWS Lambda doesn't actually compile your Golang code. So you should upload already compiled one. Uh, like, for example, when you, when you upload Node.js code, you upload it in zip file. So probably for Golang, it's also <clears throat> either zip file with compiled code or just a binary file. Which means that potentially, in the future, they can add support of, for example, Rust or C++, which is great. However, there is one disadvantage as well. Uh, because it's compiled code, you cannot use their built-in code editor tool, which is which is not not perfect, but which is quite good. And it is based on Cloud9. If you know there was this company, it was Cloud ID. Now it's, it, it had been acquired by Amazon some time ago. I wouldn't really see it as a major downside because you probably won't use it in your production environment. However, it could be really useful when you just prototype it because um, I used it a lot for Node.js prototyping. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, I honestly have one more article to show with you. And it is really great. It's about databases benchmarking. But I'm out of time and I don't want this video to be too long for you. So I will keep it for the next time. It's gonna be legend. Wait, wait, wait for it. Derry! Thank you, folks. Have a great week. See you very soon.